Let's go over everything you need to know about the new Dragon spec, Augmentation Evoker. Augmentation Evoker is a new spec released in Dragonflight patch 10.1.5, Fractures in Time. So what is Augmentation Evoker? It's classed as a damage dealing spec, and that's how you'll queue into any sort of group content as a damage dealer. But you'll soon realize most of your abilities are focused around buffing and supporting your allies. So you'll see yourself boosting the damage of your allies rather than hitting those huge damage numbers yourself. Augmentation Evokers can use either the power of the Black Dragonflight to cast big earth attacks, or the Bronze letting you alter time and create really interesting buffs. But what does the gameplay look like? The gameplay is you pick this attunement and then you cast an ability called Ebon Might. This increases your four nearest allies primary stat by a percent of your own, and cause eruptions you deal to deal more damage. And this is the core of the Augmentation Evoker. It's a, it's a close range buff and a personal buff. And your job is to keep this up. So you buff everyone and then use things like Eruption, Upheaval and Breath of Eons to extend the duration of this big buff. So where other damage dealers are maybe giving a very small party wide buff and then focusing on a big rotation to pump out as much damage as possible, yours is more focused around buffing everyone and keeping this buff active. And the more, the better you play and the better uptime you have on your abilities, the bigger the buff to your allies and the longer it lasts and the, the more damage your allies will be able to deal. So if you're looking at something like Mythic Plus, being able to buff four of your closest allies, that means that although you might have a, a significantly lower amount of damage to, say, a, a more selfish damage dealer, the damage is picked up by the massive buffs you're giving your allies. So we talked a lot about these big buffs, let's go into them. These are the big reasons to play Augmentation Evoker. You have your attunement that increases either speed or your health of your allies. Then you have Blistering Scales. This places a shield on an ally, and when they are hit, they deal volcanic damage to the person hitting them. It reminds me a lot of the Earthen Shield on Shaman, because it stays up for a long time, and it's just, it's just a really nice, long-time defensive ability. The next one is one of my personal favorites, Spatial Paradox. This increases the range of healing by 100% and lets the person it's used on cast while moving. This is incredible for healers. If you don't target somebody, it will cast it on the closest healer. If you do, it will cast it on the person you're targeting on. And this is just amazing. They get massive range. They can cast while moving. And the effect is also cast on you who's casting it, the Evoker. So this is really good. I think one of the biggest issues in, in Mythic Plus right now is how difficult the healing has become. And this is just a nice nice big thing to give to your healer when they're in the panic moment or when there's a lot of movement needed or when boss mechanics going off and then damage dealing ability so we said that a big part of this is buffing your allies rather than buffing your own damage so the first big one is ebon might we talked about this at the start and this gives a four nearest allies a primary stat boost by a percent of your own this is huge it gives a massive party-wide damage increase next up you have fate mirror gives allies a chance to echo damage for 15% of their damage, which is just a big boost, a 15% boost to damage that can proc randomly. Breath of Eons, when you breathe over an ally, you give them temporal wounds. Their abilities can now shield them, and then a portion of all the damage will crit at the end once the buff wears off. Another huge damage buff. Inter Infernal's Blessing, Fire Breath now buffs allies, given a chance to add fire damage to their attacks. So you can see now there's a lot of buffing and party-wide damage boosters, which is really, really good. And that's why I think this seems more like a support class. Some other things they do is cooldown reduction. So let's talk about the cooldown reduction abilities. You have motes of possibility. As you attack, there's a chance for these sand time looking things to drop. And if you go over them, anyone can pick these up and they reduce the cooldown of major abilities by 10 seconds. There's time skip, which reduces the evoker's cooldown. This is a channel for two to three seconds. You can spec in to get three seconds or it's two seconds of space. And this reduces your cooldowns 1000% faster, getting you back in the fight, back into your supportive ability or getting big damage in for the big fights. And then on top of this, they have some really strange buffs that are just not either a damage buff or a cooldown. Uh, some are Wernstone. This gives an ally an item similar to a, a Soul Stone, and you can use it, and you use it, and you will teleport to each other. It's a really cool thing. It has a cast, so you can't do it on the fly as much as like you grabbing them, you know, during combat and pulling them to you. But if someone goes a certain way, like if you're if you're on different platforms, you can get to your ally. Really useful. Timelessness can reduce threat generation on an ally by up to 33%. I think it says this is weaker on tanks, but yeah, if you've got a squishy class that pulls aggro, you can knock that straight off. And then you've got Defy Fate, prevent death and heal with increased spell power for nine seconds on nearby allies. Reminds me of kind of when a, when a priest dies in battle, they can resurrect as, a, as an angel for a few seconds. Similar to that, but you don't actually die. It prevents the death and gives a big group wide buff. But yeah, they're all the big buffs and things that you can be playing around with. There's a lot of other small things in the talent tree and like uh, changes to certain abilities, but they're the cool looking ones and some of the big ones that might make you want to play this class. And then when you're not buffing everybody, you're dealing your own damage. And two of the cool new ones we got on this class is Upheaval. You charge the spell, it will go out in a big circle and knock enemies up in the air, interrupting them. Range is increased the longer the charge is channeled from 3 yards to 12. It looks amazing. It feels amazing. 
interrupts are so important right now. So yeah, this is an amazing ability I think they, they've added. And then eruption damages enemies and those around him. So big AOE. Uh, two really cool abilities, but you can you can get the feel that this is more of a support class. Despite that, the abilities are cool. On top of that, there's loads of other increases to other abilities like Landslide and Living Flame, but these are the new ones. I hope this has helped. This looks like a really nice spec. I really hope we see more support added. I'd love to see a full support category come out and, and you know mix up the game a little bit and have a support role and all these different supports that could do different things. Maybe one's focused on cooldowns, one's focused on, you know, buffing enemies, buffing allies or uh, nerfing enemies, you know, hexes and stuff. I think it could be really cool. So yeah, that's that's the class. It's coming out on the 11th in the new patch. So I hope you, hope you enjoy playing it. If you do try it, take care and I'll catch you in the next one.